Okay, I'm going to go over this very fast. Um, hi, that's me, and I'm part of the RDFMG. Uh, last time, uh, Dr. Avramov and Dr. Avanov presented their work, so this is what I do. Um, uh, it's a great idea for me, to everybody to come here to present to the rest of the department, because it helps us to, uh, force me at least, to answer the important question, what do I do? Uh, and do my, do my student do? So this, I draw this picture last night, and I show it to my daughter. Uh, by the way, who is uh, seven months old, and uh, she looks very pleased. So <laughs> I'm very happy about this. So this is what I do. Uh, but I'll go over this very quickly. I'm a reactor guy. I do modeling and the simulation. So we understand that the modeling and the simulation of the reactor system is a multi-physics, multi-scale approach, right? So uh, you, ha you have different physical domains. You have different scale of problems. And then by the same time, if you think about it, everything in your model, in your simulation, comes with uncertainty, right? Either because of the lack of knowledge to your data or model, or it's just because of the randomness of nature. So that when you take into account all of this, you need a, a methodology to basically quantify this. And then you want to know how much it will impact on your simulation results. So this is what we do in the framework with the OECD NEA benchmark for the light water reactor modeling simulation. Um, we, we did this calculation for the PWR TMI unit one. Uh, uh, multi-physics calculation. This is um, uh, we show that steady state. You see this uh, distribution, what, which which is not a single value. There's a distribution on it. It's because of uncertainty coming from different physics. And then this is the reactor uh, core power distribution. And then you see there's also there. You probably can see the numbers. It shows basically there's also uh, quite a quite a significant uncertainty uh, coming from that. And moving. To from steady state to transient, we're modeling a uh, raw ejection type of uh, accidents. And you can see that uh, the core reactivity, as a function of time, has a quiet span of, uh, of, the, of the range, the area. So that this will af actually affect your, uh, your safety margin uh, in your transient. Uh, reactors, we also work on the so-called advanced, OK, non light water. One of the examples here is that uh, we work uh, on the uh, electrical fast reactor. So this is work done by each detail the core modeling of the reactor assembly. We use uh, 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 GPT to generate this uh, sensitivity profile that from coming from re with respect to the uncertainty of the new. Uh, we fold it with e the uncertainty of the nuclear data, which is and usually in the covariance matrix, and we find the uh, uncertainty. But of course, we know that nuclear data uncertainty is just part of it, just a very small fraction of all the uncertainties. Okay? So keep that in mind. This is what we usually will deal with in a fast reactor analysis. All kinds of boundary conditions and everything. Okay? So keep that in mind. We, we need a, a method when, when we put everything together you know, time-dependent calculation. So um, we work with Argon, this is also Caius work, uh, on the uh, simulation of uh, advanced burner reactor uh, in a transient uh, with unprotected loss of flow uh, where you lose at the same time your, your memory and the intermediate pump. And this is of the reactivity over time. Using this method, we're able to get in your safety parameters, such as uh, fuel, uh, center line temperature, uh, climbing temperature, and coolant temperature over the transient. Okay, so, um, but we have the beautiful tools. Very often, the question that we're trying to answer is, what is the uh, efficiency and what is the accuracy? On one hand, you have this high fidelity codes, which has fewer appro approximations or, or assumptions to the transport equation, which can give you accurate but then the price you pay is that they run slower, right? And production codes, which are used on a daily basis, which can run really fast, but then you don't have that accuracy comparing to the high. And try to balance these two sort of set of codes. Um, project that, that was led, this lead by um, Dr. Arvamova, we're looking to develop a multi-level embedded iterative approach to couple these two uh, setups. 
involves the cross-section generation, uh, annuity factor generation, and try to accelerate the calculation, uh, but not, uh, but, uh, not to uh, lose the accuracy. So this is actually a two-way traffic, you know, you can understand as uh, accelerating the, the or to improve the accuracy of the, the low fidelity codes. Another example I'm giving is that sometimes you don't need that high resolution of, of results, okay? You probably it's okay to have the pin resolution, but then in this case, if you will talk about the pin average solution, not a good idea. A good, Okay, so that, that's why we need to look into some uh, lower order transport defined PN, you know, SP, SP3. But the problem is that you need the help from correctly constructed unity factors so that you can correct uh, your, your, your SP3 results. This is ongoing work as led by um, uh, Yu Chao. Okay, so when you have your code methods, do is application validation, right? This day we work with uh, other collaborators. We started up this uh, uh, time-dependent neutron transport benchmark, the so-called C5G7 TD. Okay, so this is based on a very famous C5G7. The idea is that we set uh, this um, a platform, and in the end. Uh, will provide a fair comparison of codes. So everybody know what, uh, what they're missing, what, how they can uh, uh, very, very preliminary results that we collected. We also contributed uh, as a participator. Uh, so some of uh, our... We also do design and optimization. Okay, so basically we're trying to do everything to improve, to make things better in the reactor, okay? In the, in the case of advanced burner tech, we are talking about these options. Also, keep in mind we have a list of constraints that we're not, we try not to violate. Uh, a good algorithm to deal with this multi uh, objective problem. So that's why we chose generic algorithm. That's not the only one that's, that can be used here, but and it, it can actually uh, push design to as close as possible. And you can pick your you know, um, optimal solutions from the surface here. This uh, algorithm can be. Okay, so these are research activities. You know, uh, and this started, but then I just want to listen here to acknowledge the, uh, the, the from the system. Ask for another 30 uh, seconds to advertise this simulation lab because it is open to everybody in the department. Okay, so we have a generic PWR simulator on the second floor of this building. It has a very running real case, real uh, simulation of the whole plant, PWR plant. Okay, we have been there. Last year we have added some very nice feature about visualization. Okay, you can you can run the local and you can map the results on the on the three D CAD model uh, real time. So you can see the change of you know temperature and etc. So this is very nice. Let me know if you want to play with it, and we'll open the door. Okay, thank you.